information. I was 17 years old and a junior in high school, but we gotta go back to whenever I was in elementary school. Okay, okay. So back then, I had went to a school that was about an hour away from the current school that I go to. And in elementary school, it was hard for me to make friends. Um, I mean, to be honest, I was low-key odd. I don't know how else to explain it, but I was just an odd child, okay? People would constantly make fun of me, and overall, it was just really hard for me to make friends. However, in sixth grade, I would say I became pretty popular. I became best friends with these two other girls who we're gonna call Grace and Sarah. How did we become best friends? Well, we were all assigned to sit at the same table in one of our classes, and one day after school, Sarah invited me to go over her house and go swimming. So I asked my mom, she said yes. So I went over there and I hung out and Sarah and I got super close. Honestly, I would say that I was better friends with Sarah than I was with Grace. If I'm being completely honest, I didn't really like Grace. I thought that she was annoying, but I'm not gonna lie, I kept it to myself because this was one of the first time that I ever actually had friends. But yeah, anyway, Sarah and I hit it off right away. And when I say that Sarah and I hit it off right away, we literally became best friends like instantly. Like, you know how you hang out with somebody for the first time and then all of a sudden you realize like holy shit like this is my person what was like that but obviously in a friend way you know and everyone told us that we looked and acted like sisters you know that reminds me of whenever i moved down here to florida i literally had the hardest time making friends down here because i didn't go to college and i didn't really do anything that would lead me to meet people who i could be friends with and when i'm telling you you can literally meet people anywhere i met my best friend mel at the dog park and literally i swear the first time hanging out with her i realized that like that was like my twin flame literally so I went like a year and a half without having any friends down here. And I'm telling you right now, I know that it is so hard to make friends, but you really just have to put yourself out there. I know it's hard for those of you who are very socially awkward and have social anxiety. I still have social anxiety to this day. Whenever her and I go out, I'm not gonna lie. I am like a puppy dog. I kind of follow her around. It's actually funny that we're talking about this because my best friend Mel just actually called me now. Say hi. Hello from New York. I'm telling you, twin flame. Anyways, but I'm saying this because I know how it is to have a hard time making friends. So if you guys are having a hard time, just literally, I realized the trick is to ask other people questions about themselves. And then that will kind of, you know, help with that process. If you don't feel like anybody's giving you anything back, don't overcompensate. I used to be a person that would ask tons of questions. I'd be like, oh, like how's college? They'd be like, good. All right, then fine. So cute. Back to the story. Anyway, so during elementary school, my parents had gotten a divorce and I was really only living with my mom because my dad's job required him to work pretty much 24 Four, seven so he couldn't really get me to school and do all that parenting adulting shit and as i got older my mom became an alcoholic which led her to also become very physically and mentally abusive love that for me anyways um sarah really helped me to get through these hard times anytime that i needed to leave my mom's house because she was going psycho again sarah would help me by letting me just come to her house and sarah's mom knew everything so whenever sarah would ask her mom she'd be like hey mom can we go pick her up like her mom's being a psycho again you know super abusive sarah Sarah's mom would be like, yeah, get in the car, we're going now. And when I tell you that my mom was literally like going psycho, she literally was going psychotic. Like there would be times at two in the morning on a school night, my mom would come into my room and start yelling at me and like drag me out of the bed by my hair for no reason. Now, Grace knew that Sarah and I were super close and she got super jealous. And I can see why, I'm not gonna lie, because soon Sarah started only inviting me over for sleepovers and not her. And then it turned into, we really never wanted to hang out with Grace. Fast forward one day during the summer, going into our eighth grade year, Grace invited us to go to a sleepover over at her house. And I politely declined just because I didn't want to go. Not only that, but anytime that I had been to Grace's house before that, her mom literally acted like Grace was superior to everyone around her and just like her her daughter was like the best thing on fucking earth so yeah like i said i said no and since i wasn't going sarah decided that she didn't want to go either which i had no part in i didn't sit there and be like oh sarah i don't think you should go da -da 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 -da. no sarah literally just didn't want to go because i didn't so right after sarah said no in the group chat i texted sarah and i'm like hey do you want to come over hang out at my house and have a sleepover so sarah says yes she came over we had a sleepover obviously we didn't invite grace and because sarah and i are low-key idiots we made a tiktok and posted it and didn't even cross our minds that oh shit grace is gonna see this and she's gonna be very pissed off well about 10 minutes after we posted that tiktok i got a message from grace saying that she never wants to see me again and that i'm psychotic and i'm not a true friend to her and that i stole her from sarah now here's the thing too right i'm not gonna lie like low-key i've always felt that grace kind of disliked me and i always did think that it was because she thought that i was stealing sarah from her and i'm not gonna lie tr trio best friends just don't work so am i surprised this happened no 
I'm not. Do I feel bad that it happened? No, I don't. So anyways, I literally left her message on red because like I said, I don't like her. So in my head, I'm thinking to myself, okay, sis, glad you got that out of your system. And then I dropped it because like I said, I don't give a fuck. So Grace actually ended up moving schools and never talked to Sarah and I ever again. But obviously, that would be the end of the story if she didn't find some other way to try and fuck my life up. So anyways, Sarah and I, we decided to try out for the cheer squad and we ended up making the team. And it wasn't just like your regular, you know, cheer at the football and basketball games. No, we actually ended up making the competitive cheer team. So we would go to competitions and actually competed. But if I'm being honest, cheer really wasn't all cracked up as it, as we thought it would be. It was honestly such a bad and low part of my middle school experience because I'm not gonna lie, the girls on our team were not good. They were terrible people and just not good influences at all. So not long after we made the team, Somehow, Sarah's nudes got leaked to the entire school. Literally, like, I I'm talking the whole school district. I'm talking middle school and high school. Because when you're in cheer, you know, you have more interactions with the high school kids as well. So it was just like a fucking shit show, not gonna lie. She got bullied because of it very badly. It honestly got so bad for Sarah that she eventually started doing online school. And I know you guys are probably sitting here like, oh, well, people's nudes get leaked all the time. It really wasn't even that big of a deal. The reason why it was such a big deal was because one, people are assholes and don't realize that it's 2024. And if you don't want kids sending nudes, well, then maybe you shouldn't have invented the internet or fucking phones. And two, the nudes that got leaked were sent to a guy who had a girlfriend. So this girl and her friends were bullying Sarah very badly. And I know you guys are sitting there. Well, she shouldn't have sent it to someone who had a boyfriend. Duh. Okay, but here's the thing, men lie. We know this, okay? So don't judge before you hear the whole situation. Okay, okay, trust the process type shit. The problem was he asked her for pictures and she didn't know that they were still together. Mm-hmm, yeah, so. Yeah. Anyway, so fast forward, COVID rolls around and I move in with my dad and my stepmom because my mom thankfully ended up going to rehab and she couldn't take care of me, obviously. But I was fine with it because sis was crazy and she needed help. You know, that's how I feel to be honest, my mom, I think I told you guys about my mom a few times that she had addiction issues when I was growing up. But if I'm being completely honest, I don't know if anybody else out there could agree. Yes, it is not nice whenever you have a parent that's not present, especially whenever your home life with your other parent is shit. But at the same time, I'm happier that she didn't drag me through her bullshit and just left whenever she was off doing her thing. Like it was better that she wasn't in my life whenever she was doing that shit. So anyways, I had to move to a new school and I knew absolutely nobody Fast forward to my sophomore year of high school. We were finally able to go back to school and Sarah and I no longer went to the same school, which really sucked because she was like my one and only friend. And now that I just moved schools, I was starting all over again because I didn't know anybody in the school district. And you know, you would have thought that I would have at least some social skills from back at my old school making friends. But as soon as I got to my new school, those like just all disappeared. It was like they left the chat. Well, anyways, in my first class that I had gone to, I had saw this really cute boy who we're gonna call Luke. And y'all, this boy caught my eye. Like, you know how you see somebody attractive and you find them attractive and like nobody else? Kind of like whenever you get a boyfriend. I don't know if any of y'all ever have this, but like whenever I start to really like a guy, I think it's called sapiosexual. I think I've told you guys about this before, but like you meet them and you get to know them and you only find that person attractive yeah that's what this was if anybody else is like sapiosexual let me know because i feel like everybody thinks i'm so weird whenever i say like oh i don't think that guy's attractive and like he can literally be the hottest guy in the world it's literally because i don't know them i don't know if they're going to stimulate my brain or anything like half of the guys that i go on dates with i on a scale from one to ten i would rate them all like a six just because i don't know them if that makes sense like there's some attraction there but like there needs to be way more if you stimulate my brain mentally anyway so like i said this boy caught my eye right away and i guess i caught his eye as well because he came up to me and he asked me for my phone number and i gave it to him and after that we hit it off immediately and we had talked for like a whole year until he finally asked me to be his girlfriend which to be honest i think is better whenever you're best friends with that person before y'all start dating because then it just adds on to the attraction you know there's already that strong foundation there which i really feel like everybody should have like yeah a relationship is all about attraction but like if y'all have a really good friendship before it can usually intensify the romantic relationship like a thousand percent but this was super exciting for me because i never had a boyfriend before him but the excitement was very short-lived because like after a month of us dating i decided to break up with him because i just personally felt like i wasn't really ready to be in a relationship and i knew that i broke his heart because he really liked me but at the same time if i felt like i wasn't ready for a relationship i wouldn't be able to put 100 effort and 
my all into that at the time. I feel like I keep interrupting the story. It's probably because I have been interrupting the story a million fucking times, but I feel like that's not something that you realize until you're older, unless you don't have like a dependence on the person that you're in a relationship with. Because I feel like when you're older, you get so busy and caught up with life that like you really just realize that there's no way that you're going to be able to put effort and energy into a relationship. And I don't know, I that's something that I literally have just realized within the past year and I'm 22. Like if you would have told a year ago me that I didn't have time to be in a relationship, I would have been like, you don't have time to be in a relationship. I will make the time. But me today, I'm like, no, I have shit to do. I don't have any time to put focus into a relationship right now. And when you get to that point in your life, everything is just so much more peaceful. Anyway, so during the time of his and I's breakup, he had met this girl named Olivia. Olivia was Luke's best friend. And I'm not really sure if Luke liked Olivia in that way. And I know that Olivia knew about me because somehow I had gotten brought up in a conversation between them. And then all of a sudden she became like my number one fan. And then somehow she figured out what I looked like. I don't know if Luke had told her my Instagram or what, but him and her were not best friends whenever him and I were dating. So that's why I like, like knew nothing of this girl but anyways yeah either he talked about me or she somehow found my instagram and she knew what i looked like so anyways fast forward a few months passed since our breakup and i was about to go into my senior year of high school and i was really sad at this time because for some reason i just could not stop thinking about luke like for the life of me could not stop thinking about this man and i really wanted him back so i ended up calling him the one night and we talked a lot of things out and bam he was mine again so obviously i'm super happy about this and i had no clue who this olivia girl was at this time as well i had no clue what she looked like or that she even existed anyway so fast forward a few weeks after luke and i started talking again we ended up officially getting back together and then fnl season started and if you don't know what fnl is it is friday night lights like the you know high school football games, the lights, yeah, that. Well, originally I had wanted to go to the first game with Luke, but he had to go to work. So I ended up going with some of my other friends because yes, I eventually did end up making friends. I know, round of applause, thank you. Oh, I did forget to mention that at the beginning of my senior year, Sarah was actually able to transfer to my school. So her and I were able to go to school together again, period. So I have my bestie back. Well, after the game, my friends and I decided to go to In-N-Out to grab some food before we headed home. So we go there, we get our food, we eat, and then we go home. And the day after the game, my friends and I, we had went to the lake and we all spent the whole day there. And when we got up there, I had had really bad service so I wasn't really able to receive messages or anything but to be honest I didn't care because I went to the lake to have a good day with my friends so then fast forward to 5 p.m my friends and I were like okay like let's go back to the cabin and just chill for a little bit because we were super hungry and tired well I get to the cabin and then all of a sudden all the text messages that my phone was not receiving while we were at the lake just freaking started coming in like crazy and there were some text messages from Luke and one of them was a screenshot of a text message but he cropped the name out so I wasn't able to see who sent it to him which is like come on bro like we're literally in a relationship seriously like we're gonna play these petty games be fucking for real be be bff be, be fucking for real anyway so attached to the screenshot it was a message that said is this true i opened the screenshot and it's this long ass message from somebody to luke that says something along the lines of hey i just saw your girlfriend aka me at in and out last night and then luke goes how do you know her also during this time nobody really knew that luke and i were back together so i was curious as to who the fuck knew this as well because i'm like okay i'm not out here telling a bunch of people so who is this person and why do they know well anyways the person responded with oh i know what she looks like also one of my friends grace used to be friends with her until she found out that your girlfriend was weird and luke was like what do you mean my girlfriend's weird and the person was saying stuff like oh your girlfriend and grace used to be friends for a long time until Grace invited her over for a sleepover the one night. And while Grace was asleep, she asked if she could use Grace's phone to text one of her other friends because her phone died. And then your girlfriend ended up going on Grace's phone and just sending a bunch of nudes to a bunch of guys. So then whenever Luke saw this, obviously he was like low key worried, I guess, because now rumors are going around about me that aren't even true, that I just like am a fucking whore and I send nudes to all of these guys. So I call Luke. He doesn't pick up, of course. And I text him, Luke, pick up the phone because whoever sent that to you is lying. And I was just extremely pissed off. 20 minutes later, Luke responds with, oh, you don't know her, her name's Olivia. And I'm thinking to myself, who the fuck is Olivia? Yeah, I don't know her, why does she know me? So after I found out that Grace is spreading all this shit around about me, I tell Sarah because she was there that day with me. And also Sarah still had Grace's phone number. So after I got Grace's phone number, I sent her a 
a message and I was like who the fuck do you think you are spreading rumors about me you know that I never spent the night at your house and I sure as hell wasn't sending people nudes from your snapchat I never even fucking touched your phone well she never responded to me she, you know fucking she's scared of confrontation but has no problem spreading rumors so not only am I pissed off at Grace but I'm pissed off at whoever the fuck this bitch is texting my man saying this shit about me when I don't even know who this girl is I've never even met her before so after that I text Luke and I'm like I don't even know this Olivia girl how the fuck does she know who I am and he was like oh um I had brought you up in a conversation the one time and then he was apologizing for even asking me if any of that was true because he knew that it wasn't like he was like yeah no I'm not gonna lie like I know you would never do something like that I'm sorry and I'm like you know it's okay but like damn bro like you're really gonna let this random ass girl get in your head like that like what the fuck so then um she starts telling Luke that I am a liar for denying all of this like girl if you want my man just say that don't be bitter the fuck anyway so at this point i drop it like i said she was like my biggest fan so i drop it i don't want to be a part of the drama neither does luke well fast forward the day after the lake one of my best friends katie and i were hanging out at her house and we were hungry so we go to get some food so we get to the store and we're walking down the aisle where like the popsicle are and the ice cream you know and katie goes to me and she's like emily that girl like the worker at the end of the aisle has literally been following us since we got in the store and i'm just like what the fuck so i wanted to see if she would keep following us around so you know we just start walking in circles literally and the girl literally kept going up and down every aisle that we would go down i thought this was super weird so did katie and then i really didn't think too much into it until i got a text message from luke and he was like bro are you the grocery store right now and i'm like yeah why and he was like bro olivia just texted me saying that you and your friend are following her around her work and I'm like, of course this crazy bitch said that. And then he goes, he was like, yeah, she said that you guys are making her feel really uncomfortable. And in this moment, I wanted to scream at this girl very badly. But did I? No. These bitches will stop at nothing to literally ruin somebody's fucking relationship. Anyway, so like I said, she's trying to make me look crazy to my boyfriend. So Katie and I just grab our shit and we leave because I was not about to deal with this bitch. I texted Luke back and I was like, listen, Luke, I have no idea what this chick even looks like. Nor do I care. I didn't even know that she worked here until you told me. I don't know this bitch's schedule. Like, what do you want from me? So then we didn't end up getting the ice cream that we wanted there. We literally just checked out with the popsicles. And then we went to the ice cream shop that was like two doors down to go get some fucking ice cream. And who walks in behind us? Psycho. AKA Olivia. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, this bitch is literally at work. At work. How the fuck are you now all of a sudden in the ice cream shop with us? Like, just go back to work before you get fired. I'm going to blame them for me getting fired too. Well, that's literally like what she uh, fucking tried to do because listen to this shit. So she tells Luke that I'm following her around on her break and that I won't leave her alone and that I'm taking pictures of her and just making her uncomfortable. So at this point, sis is really starting to piss me off, like real bad. And honestly, I was about to go up to her and ask her what the fucking issue was. But then Katie's like, listen, bro, just drop it. You're dating Luke. She's not, she's mad, let her be bothered. So I took Katie's advice and so, you know, we get our ice cream and then we go back to Katie's house. And when we got to Katie's, I got another text from Luke and he's like, bro. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, be honest. Did you call the store and complain about Olivia? And I'm like, no, bro, I didn't. Like, why are you being Captain save a right now anyways? Like, what the fuck? She's not your girl. And he was like, well, Olivia said that right after you left the ice cream shop, her store received a phone call about you complaining about her. And she thinks it was you. And I'm like, of course the bitch does. She's my number one fucking fan. Who else would it be? So at this point, I'm like, Luke, I have too much shit going on in life right now to be worrying about a fucking psycho that wants my man. Either you shut this shit down or I will go to her store and I will fucking shut it down. She wants me to be so obsessed with her so badly. Bitch, I'll show you more than obsessed. So then 20 minutes goes by and then I get another text from Luke saying, bro, look. And he took a screenshot, two screenshots of Olivia's Instagram and this Instagram note. I have no fucking idea what an Instagram note is. So if one of y'all could tell me what that is down below in the comments, I would very much appreciate it. Anyways, it was a pic on her story saying me after two bums show up at my work and watch me while I'm getting my bag. These girls put the pro in problematic. Then her Instagram note says, if you want an autograph, just say that i'm ready to fight i've never fought a girl in my life and i'm ready to fight this girl is fucking delusional nobody's obsessed with you nobody gives a fuck where you work i'm sorry babe you're not that important nobody's showing up to your work to stalk you i promise i promise so i'm like Luke, what is this girl's issue with me like what did you tell this girl why does she hate me so badly he was like honestly i don't know and listen i told her that me and you have known each other for two years and i'm always gonna believe you over her and then he sent me a screenshot of the text and then at the end of it it was like so please leave me alone and shut the fuck up so then she responds to him saying that i am a crazy psycho bitch and i'm a 
liar and I'm not owning up to the things that I did and that if I do anything else to her, she's gonna call my mom because she knows my mom's number and she's gonna tell her everything. And listen y'all, when I saw this text, I could not help to just laugh. This girl was so down bad for my man that she didn't realize by trying to make it look like I was crazy, she was literally making herself look like a fucking psycho. Like babe, good luck getting a hold of my mom while she's in rehab, they might put you in there with her too bitch. So then right after that, she sends Luke another message saying, Luke, I just wanna tell you, you only cause problems. You've ruined my day on many occasions. Do not talk to me anymore. After that, Luke was like, all right, bet, and blocked her, which I'm not gonna lie, which he should have done that in the beginning because it would have saved me so much drama and so many fucking headaches. Anyways, after he blocked her, we haven't heard anything else from her. And of course, Luke and I are still together. Our relationship is literally perfect. I'm not gonna lie though, I haven't gone back to that fucking grocery store since and I don't plan on going back there because I don't trust any fucking grocery store that lets a psycho work there.